Lafferty. That's going to be an area for Sviantek to look to attack. The second serve of Collins can sit up just a little bit, and it is an opportunity as it was there. Well, the first two points and an illustration of how critical the first serve is going to be for Danielle Collins today. Night and day in terms of how she's able to get on top in a rally. We will keep an eye on the percentage. Thirty for Collins, it's about the first serve, certainly, but she's also got to hit her targets. Balls that sit up too much in the middle of the box. If it's hard, it may play right into Sviantek's strike zone. That last one, Sviantek was beautifully behind it. She tried to impart a bit of extra spin on that one, didn't she? a dialed in return at Iga Shvantec and an early break point for the world number one. Yeah, that serve much better placed. Shvantec had to lunge for it off balance. That's the serve that Collins will be looking for. Be able to hit that one, also the wide one. Ball. Oh. First extended rally that we've seen. That's one of the strengths of the Collins game, her ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sviantek off of both sides. The backhand for Collins, that's a bigger weapon. But the forehand, when it's holding up, there's just not many places for Sviantek to go. Oh. I also think with the surface, you know, the ball can kind of jump up a bit. 
but it also can go through the court. And I think that's the challenge for Sviantec, very different from a red clay court, where the ball sits up, but she can time it better. It's, it's a little different in the consistency of the bounce. That's what Collins has been able to take advantage of here on these courts in the past. Shriantek trying to just add some pace, some depth, and decisions. overcooking it. But I think the year that Shriantek played Collins in 2022, that was the year she started to figure out these Australian Open courts. And she started to play a little quicker. She started catching up with the rhythm a little bit better. It's just Danielle Collins was so quick through the court, it was another challenge. Had enough spin on it that it just looped in. Shvantec just watching that one plop inside the sidelines. Two break points for Collins now. Did so well, Schwantek, didn't it? It was some return from yeah, Collins. Cool. She's sharp on return so far. Team Schwantek there, Thomas Witterowski, coach of about two years. Still break point for the world number one. an opportunity that Collins was looking for. Yes. She's been doing a good job of putting her head down after misses, getting right back to business. She'll need to do that constantly over the course of this match. Advantage. Advantage. I think it's safe to say she's she's committing to taking the return early. She's going to live and die by that sword, I think, Danielle Collins. That's the opportunity to put that initial pressure on Sviantec if you can connect with it the way Collins is trying to do. I also think, you know, when I watched that match from a yes. couple of years ago, it was the angles that Danielle Collins was able to get as well. We haven't quite seen it yet in the early stages of this match, but it's a combination of pace, depth, and then getting her opponent off the court. She's been playing her best tennis. Ah. <laughs> she tried an angle there. Advantage. Advantage. But it's just hard to defend against that. If you know you've got to be ready for the depth, the pace, as Sviantec is looking to do, then you get a shot like that. If it falls in, there's just no way to defend it. Possibly not the cleanest hit. Game. Nice all court play from Iga Shrontek. Perhaps a little bit of that United Cup mixed doubles coming to the yeah, fore. Okay, so fun to see her in that format alongside Hubert Hercatch at the United Cup. Really seem to enjoy the team environment, which is great to see in such a, an individual sport. Chanda, here's that service motion. It's not a dramatic tweak, is it? But it could make all the difference. 
I mean, any change at this level is significant because, you know, player has to think about it. It's something else they've got to throw into the mix when they're used to having things on automatic. But instead of coming down, she's kind of coming a little to the side just to try to keep that service motion a little more continuous. It'll take some time for it to completely lock in. The biggest thing is you've got to commit to it, and, and that's been pretty impressive from Sviantec. There's that angle on the backhand. She does have a gorgeous backhand, Collins, doesn't she? It's world class. It is her weapon. She can hit it cross court. She can hit it down the line. And she's so comfortable changing direction. That was Jared Jacobs there, coach of Danielle Collins. Just come on from so Danielle different. Collins. It's iconic, isn't it? The Danielle Collins come on. Such a fierce competitor. Yeah, she brings the intensity, and that's another area that she's able to match Sviantec. Sviantec, one of the most intense players out there. Every single point, she doesn't let up. And, and Collins has been doing a good job of that on her side of the court. What a hold. That's a terrific serve from Sviantec, and it's a serve she started using more when she played Sophia Kennan in the first round. Instead of just going hard, you know, flat, she got a little side spin, so it tailed away from the returner. believe she missed 13, that one. 15. Had Collins almost a sitting duck up there, just overplayed it. Didn't look hugely comfortable on the volley, did she, Collins?
Oh, That's the side Fiontech may look to pick on a little bit more, the forehand of Collins. That's the side that can go off just a bit that isn't quite the consistent weapon that the backhand is. Goodness, Collins did well there because that was a, a bending oh, serve. We could see it from our position here, bananaing in the air, and Collins watched it so closely. Over the course of a match, you start to look for tendencies. You start to try to read what you're going to get from your opponent, and Collins aware that Sviantec may lean to picking on the forehand on these serves. ball striking from both players and that yes. gets Danielle Collins coach on his feet rightfully so after that big of hitting from the ground to be able to throw in that change up the drop shot beautifully played and taking Shiantek completely by surprise she's winning all the longer rallies is Danielle Collins Collins. First of the match, she's not a prolific double falter, Iga Shiontek. Maybe that last point has got Shiontek rattled just enough. She's not used to losing those kinds of points. It's a quick recovery here. Trouble. Break point, Collins. Shvantec can't believe it. She tosses the ball away in disgust. Collins, though, on top. Collins leads by three games to one. And well-earned break of serve there. Andrea, it looks like it's playing quick down there. It is playing quick, and Chanda was absolutely right when she said that there was such 100% intensity from the first point on. There was, you know how sometimes players like to ease into matches, find their rhythm. There was no such thing, just palpable tension from the first moment on and it's just rising and the audience can feel it. The crowd is so locked in as are the players and Danielle just so focused and calm and collected. We know she can sometimes be very emotional, but she seems very calm, very collected out here. Shviantek has got to feel a little bit like Collins stole that game. I mean, she was in control, looked like they were going to stay on serve here. And all of a sudden, it has changed dramatically. Shviantek down a break, trying to get the immediate break back. Let's 
Second serve punished. Land 30. It's not a break until you've held. That's the cliche in tennis, but of course, uh, cliches are cliches for a reason. bit rash there from Love Collins. It. She's been making very good decisions on the court thus far, but just perhaps a slight lapse there. Three breakback points for the world number one. Yeah, sometimes it can be difficult when you put so much energy into breaking. It's this tremendous high, and then you get this low, and it, you have to push yourself to maintain the intensity then. from Sviantec, the adjustments she had to constantly make within that rally. Good defense from Collins, really pushing Sviantec, who had to give a bit of everything to get this point wrapped up. talking about how quickly Danielle Collins has been hitting Thank the ball. You. This has been the difference in the av average top spin forehand speeds and Collins hitting the cover off the ball. That number has tightened a little bit. Sviantec got a little bigger in that last game, which helped her break serve. But that is about a seven and a half mile per hour difference for me to understand. Talk about 12 kilometers per hour, seven and a half miles per hour difference. That's significant, and it's why Collins has been able to get the early lead, the early break. But Shiantek, she's recognized it. She's made adjustments. She's starting to hit a bit quicker, and that has allowed her to take a little more control, along with a few more errors from Danielle Collins. Seven points in a row here for Shiantek. Let's put a stop to that, says Danielle Collins. Frankly, Chanda, anyone out hitting Shontek on the forehand is good going, let alone by seven miles per hour. It doesn't sound like much, but that's big time. It was 10 miles per hour to 3-1. I mean, it was a big difference from Collins. Another big one there and a big hold for three all in this opening set. Three it's beautifully on. poised. Is the intensity back, Andrea, for Collins? She just seemed a bit down after losing her serve. And I think that's the thing when you play these champions, these top players, you don't get so many chances. And it feels like Danielle knows that and is upset with herself that she didn't you know, kept pressing on that gas pedal. That's just how it felt, like she was a bit down on herself and that's seeping into her game right now. Yeah. 
defense has got to work to be on the front foot. Early in rallies, controlling the middle of the court. And guys, I just got a few raindrops. I don't know if I'm imagining this, but I think it's starting to spit a little bit. Nothing to affect play, but just something to pay attention to. Ball. Players look like they are feeling those. Yeah, it's those definitely raindrops. raining now. Now it's raining. It was spitting, but now it's actually raining. Fifteen thirty. I think it's more important the fact that Danielle Collins has lost the last two games. It's been a momentum shift for Sviantec, and this game could add to it. So Collins really needing to hold her ground here. Shriantek yes. immediately yes. opening up the court. Not content to just stay in the cross court rally, taking Collins by surprise. Just 50% first serves in for the match, Collins. Wouldn't mind raising that a little bit. Because that's the difference it makes. That's nicely done. And Danielle and Collins, Collins, she started playing some doubles, won her first doubles tournament last year. And I think that has helped her comfort level in all these different areas of the court. That was a very solid volley. The trademark New command. Balls, the intensity is back. La 15.
great serve. 15 on. Actually winning more points on her second serve than her first at the moment, Sviantec. tried to stand up to the pace from Shviante, but just 15. too much for her to handle off the forehand. Fourteen, fifteen. Again, not a great first serve, not the biggest, but had such bend on it. She's serving Four well today. Five. 79% first serves in, 22 out of 28. I think this match for Sviantec is going to require what her first round against Sophia Kennan required. A little bit similar. Kennan also, terrific ball striker, great backhand, able to stand up shot after shot from the baseline. Sviantec started using that serve, using the wide serve, the bend, using a little more kick just to change the rhythm, change the contact point. Did it beautifully in that last service game as well. I'm curious also to hear your thoughts, uh, Andrea, on this, but I think at times, these last couple of matches because I've Shviantek seen from Shviantek, replay of the in-call on the left near sideline. In particular, as Shviantek looks for a replay, wants confirmation. But I think sometimes Shviantek doesn't take enough forehands. Six millimeters, that ball. <laughs> Incredible. Actually perfectly placed if she planned that. But I think we've seen Iga at her best, Third controlling kilo. the middle of the court with the forehand, where you can go either direction, you can hold the shot a little longer. Do you think she's playing a little too straight up in some of these matches? I will, I will answer that after this point, but in short, I agree with you. <laughs> oh. I thought we were going to have a cliffhanger there. Add a little drama <laughs> to the moment. Well, that was a beautiful return. I absolutely agree with you, Chanda. 13, and 15. I think where you can see it most is the reason why she still plays the best on clay is that you naturally do that and you have to go around and use your forehand. Even players with weaker forehands do that on clay because the ball sits up more and that is still her best surface because she has to do it. And I absolutely agree that she should incorporate that more on hard court as well. Come on. 
Yeah, I think even like that last ball, she had time that worked 40, to get 50. around and hit a forehand, and she's one of the quickest players out there. May not be as comfortable because you do feel a little more rushed, but I think that is an area where Sviantec can improve, which is incredible considering the space she's at right now. Great point from the pole. I'm looking at it with fresh eyes now, though, because there were still a couple of those shots that could have been forehands where she could have maybe put herself in even better position, Chviantek. I was just going to say, Chanda, I think she could have made that point much easier on herself if she had gone around to take her forehand. It would have opened up better angles for her and she wouldn't have had to hit such a difficult shot in the end at the net. Sviantek really digging into this game, adding to the pressure on Collins now. Oh, what a point. Some of those backhands, the way she leans on them. Glorious shot. Advantage, Collins. Really impressive from Collins, the way she did a reset after losing the lead in this game. Got right back to hitting and being aggressive, playing fearless tennis. Tells you everything. Yes. The timing wrong there. That's a lot for less than one set's worth of tennis. They're working hard out there. Let for seven. Advantage, oh, From 40-15 in this game, she's in a spot of bother, Danielle Collins. Great point. Needs a first serve.
Lafferton. Fifteen on. God, Danielle Collins on the move well there, didn't she? Looked a little sluggish moving out to this backhand. Fantech trying to get just a 15, little more 15. angle, but it's difficult when you are falling sideways, body weight going away from the court. Perhaps a half chance here for Collins, 15-30. Live and dying by that sword. Daniel Collins, that return aggression. By and large, it's been a good tactic this set. Still an opening. 30 all. Tense moments here. Did 40 30. But it faded well away from the line. Set point for the world number one. knows she's in a match, but she is on top. 6-4, the world number one takes the opener. Since the Love rain delay, vision. Iga Swiatek has come out more aggressive, and there's been a nice difference in the speeds of her shots from the ground. Both the forehand and the backhand have gotten quicker. 
On that backhand side, she's increased the speed by about eight Eight's miles eight. per hour on average. And on the forehand, it's almost 10 miles per hour quicker since that 25 minute delay. something that Collins is having to contend with now. And we are, we're always interested in what changes. You know, can we tangibly see it? Well, that is a clear, tangible difference in terms of the Sviantec game. Those are big numbers because she wasn't dollying the ball before the break. Loose ones from Daniel Collins 15, here. 14. Keep looking for him. And it just feels like the quality of play is dividing slowly here, whereas in the first set they seem neck to neck, only an inch apart. Now it seems like Iga is running faster and Danielle is, Danielle is just staying behind a little bit. chance to be better than that against the world's best. The other thing that is remarkable when you look at the speeds from Sviantec, she still has margin, she still has tremendous spin. This is not increasing the risk, it is just increasing the pace. Danielle yeah. Collins not out of this by any means, but these are the tricky stages that she has to navigate, try to keep some, some tension in the match, keep herself close, try to get the break back, or at least keep it to one break of serve so that Shiantek can't swing away any more freely. to that game plan, Collins, no matter what. She's not a woman that backs down. Little opening here, 15.30. defense from Collins. 15, 14. Nice balance in that rally of defense and offense, forcing the miss from Sviantec. And a little opening becomes a very big one. Back-to-back -back break back points for the American.
nice idea from Collins and, and reasonable after that mm -hmm. down the line shot that she hits, which Fiontech just so quick to adjust to get on balance, get something behind that passing shot. Here we go, Danielle. Come on, Dean. Come on, Danielle. That's a play that would have been good enough against most players in the world, wouldn't it? Not eager, Fiontech. She just asks you more questions and harder questions. It is still break point, though. The crowd like it. Danielle Collins definitely yeah. likes it. It's her favorite shot, and it was perfect execution. The shot was the prime example of a player who believes, who knows they have beaten this player on this very court. Collins going after it to get herself back on serve. Game on, once again. Just a short delay here as uh, fans make their way back into the stadium. Of course, they're allowed to do that on even games as well as odd. Players getting used to it pretty quickly, I think. It's a challenge when the fans are moving in directly behind the players to the sides. Not as big of a deal, but Rightfully wanting to refocus here. Oh. 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 by Iga Sviantek. Looking comfortable in the full court, isn't she? Love the Stayed very calm behind the ball and even on the high backhand, which is always a little more challenging. Played for positioning and then for placement. Nice to see that variety. And a tough moment once again on serve for Danielle Collins. Loose one 15 from Sviontek on a second serve. That felt a bit out of character, just completely overplaying it. Had a good look. Love 30, you at least want to put your opponent under that kind of pressure to have to play the ball. different feeling for a server love 40 versus 1530 and getting somewhat of a gift at love 30 as we see Coco Vandeweghe checking things out Danielle Collins making good use of that reprieve
Collins on the run in that rally. Shontek creating an open court. 13, 14. Heading right into it. Ashwan Tech again, doing it the hard way, moving the ball, hitting big through big lanes, working Collins out of that point. Break point here, been a while since she's had an easy hold. That'll do nicely. Yes. First ace of the match. Tough as nails is Danielle Collins. Two first serves, two points one. Advantage, Collins. Neither of these players will be ace leaders on the tour, but those are two big serves from Collins at a crucial moment. Clutch serving from the American. What a hole that is. Break point down, three first serves. That ball maybe just off the back of the line, but Iga Sviantek's backhand can stand up to right just on, about any go. shot. But when you start to take more forehands, control the middle of the court, it just gives you a few more options to create openings. I think exactly, you know, against a player who also has a backhand as a strength and who has that shot as a weapon, as Danielle Collins does, Sophia Kennan does, being able to take a few more forehands to open up the court, which Fiontech can do, and they can't do it as well as she can. That's what you look for, areas where you're better than your opponent. It's a... Uh... 15, we're 15. kind of quibbling on, you know, just the minutia of it all, of course, <laughs> when you look at everything Shiantek is bringing to the table. But, you know, that's what the game is at this level. It's just small differences. Make a match easier, make it tougher. Another great serve. Thank you. It's fascinating stuff. So it's, it's not about the quality of the backhand. It's just about Absolutely not. Yeah. tactics. It's about the tactics. It's about how can you create openings? How can you freeze your opponent? If you go to set up for a forehand, they don't know if you're going inside out or inside in. It's a similar look. Now you're creating more open space for yourself that you can't create off the backhand the same way, no matter how good the shot is. After losing serve in the opening game of this set, Danielle Collins has regrouped admirably. She is bang on it now. And once again, has created a break point on the Shiontek serve.
Well, the Daniel Collins backhand has joined the party out here. It is doing Collins serious damage. Daylight now between Collins and the world number one. A break and a 3-1 lead. Andrea, there was pin drop silence during the latter stages of that game. This crowd are so into it, aren't they? The tension is absolutely so thick and palpable, and I, it just felt like Danielle was like, this is not going to cut it. I have to step it up, and she just did. And the ability to, to, to do that was so impressive to watch from so close where I'm sitting. You could just see her face going into like, okay, this is what I have to do. And she's been doing it for the past two or three games now. And this point right here, we've seen too little of this from Iga in the past two or three games. It was all Danielle, everything was on her record. And from four all on in the first set, Iga took a bit more of the upper hand in terms of just dominating the rally. And this is the first rally in the last three games where she was able to do that again. Do no wrong that backhand 30, at the moment. 15. Danielle Collins stepping up and she's starting to take more initiative. That ball a little shorter, but very confidently into the open court. Sort of tennis that got Danielle Collins to the Australian Open final two years ago. She, of course, reached the semi final in 2019 as well. She loves to play here in Melbourne. She's feeling it right now. 4-1. <laughs> she fed the backhand there, Shvontek. Surely, Andre, you've got to stay away from that shot right now. Absolutely. I don't know why she keeps serving to that side, but every second serve is going into the backhand. Danielle is queuing up for it. She's setting up for it before the ball even lands in the box, and it's just... Go time after that. And that's perhaps why we don't see Shiantek take a few more forehands. She got a little rushed on that one. And you know, that type of miss it dissuades you from, from doing it consistently.
goodness me, Daniel Collins is all over the world number one just now. Love 40. It is 1 4, Love 40. If she takes one of these, Danielle Collins will be serving for the set against the world number one. Remember that one game that Shontek has was a break of the Collins serve at the start of this set. It has been one way traffic for some time. This is extraordinary from Danielle Collins. Applaud they might. Wow. Collins leads by five games to one. And this is exactly how she's played the third set against Angeli Kerber in the first round. She was zoning so hard. Just what we are witnessing right now. And just remember Angela Kaba, former champion here at the tournament, and yes, she's had a big break after having a baby, but that third set was a brilliant performance, and this second set right here seems very... I'm lacking the English term for it, but it just reminds me of that third set she's played against Angie Kerber in the previous round. It's very similar. Yesterday, yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Serving for the set, the world number 62. Ball. <laughs> Been a while since the Danielle Collins backhand has failed to find the court. It just looks like Collins has been so much more aggressive with her court positioning, but also with her shot selection, her shot placement going into the open court earlier in rallies. It has gotten Sviantek off balance. Can Sviantek steady herself here? On. And the other thing for Shiantek perhaps is to wait for a dip in Collins's game. I mean, it's so tough when you're coming up against a player who is this on fire and they're just not giving you much of a chance to dictate. Collins can't miss. Shontek can. This ball barely missing the baseline. Six millimeters. But out is out, and Collins continues to wrestle the momentum completely. Well, Danielle Collins here 40, is on the brink not only of taking a set from Igor Svantec, but of winning six games in a row against the world number one. It has been an extraordinary 20 minutes of tennis from the American. Two set points. Keep going for 40, it. 50. Here, Danielle Collins, coach, shouting from the other side. Not necessarily in the spirit of this coaching rule, but he is trying everything he can to get his player over the finish line in this second set. Oh. Oof. 
Vinicius. It's only a second of the match. Good luck. You can understand good her good going for it, maybe, go. but wow. Keep the heat turned up. Keep the heat turned up, says Jared Jacobs. Just maybe not on the second serve. Back to Juice. Oh. A gift from the uh, world number one. Collins. Well, Sviantek under pressure, tremendous pressure still, and she is trying to find the answers. Couldn't get it there, and instead it's another set point for Collins. Double fault on a set point. Andrea, how heavy does Danielle Collins' arm look right now? The arm is okay, it's just the wrist. You could see how she decelerated the wrist. Her arm was actually in an okay velocity, but she decelerated the wrist and the ball just flying along on her there. Advantage. How different is it serving for a set or a match when you know you have a double break mm -hmm. in the back pocket? It's always a little extra tension that creeps in. End of sets, the end of matches. Set point number four. Oh. It's also yes. that feeling that you've got to do just a little bit more because your opponent, who's a great player, is going to step up when their back is against the wall. So it's a combination that works to disrupt the person, the player trying to close it out. Again, she hit Advantage. that ball well with her arm, but her wrist has no movement in it at all, and the second serve just lands long on her. The double fault in the game. And it's a point for Shantek to get one of the breaks back. Oh. Once more from the box, Danielle Collins. She's asking them to get on their feet. I need it. I need it from you. <laughs> Earn your paycheck, guys. <laughs> oh, it's tense out there. Advantage for Sviantek. For Sviantek, this almost feels like a bit of a bonus. It seemed like she was completely out of this set. But here she is, 
Another chance to get one of the breaks back and keep herself in it. Finally a first serve. Yes. Collins trying desperately to not give Shriantek any real hope here. Serve her fastest of the match. What a time for it. That backhand is almost automatic from Collins throughout this second set in particular. And those kinds of misses, they just communicate that extra tension she's dealing with. So maybe a change of equipment will help her gain more the control that she wants to feel right now. Game approaches the 10 minute mark. A fourth double fault of the game. She's now down the same end as her coaching box, Danielle Collins. So all that energy and positivity they're bringing, it's got less far to travel to get to her. Ah! Tech has got to keep working here to spread the court. That serve, the width, the placement, that's what did the job. Good for Shviantek at times. That ball right off 13, the line. 15. Spin. Looked like it had ballooned off a racket, but just had all that spin loaded onto it. So it plopped down on the line. Great shot. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. She went for it, Shiantek did. Thought she might catch Collins unaware with a second That's serve that was more like a first. She's two points away from the set once again. It's almost been better for Collins returning than serving. How aggressive minded she's been able to be. A fifth set point. Her first on the Sviantec serve. Oh. And the Sviantec second serve.
What a point from Iga Swiatek. Remarkably, Swiatek is fighting to hold her serve for the first time in this set. I mean, would we have said that, especially after how the first set ended? She did so well there because she was winning just 15% of points on a second serve this set before that one. That's more the serve Shiantek has got to look for. She's been going hard, she's been going flat. It hasn't been working. That's the change up that she needed. That's loose. Adios. Good chances to step in. Keep swinging fast. Here we go. Keep swinging fast, says Jared Jacobs. It's done her pretty well so far. Juice number two. Couple of rasping forehands in the last few points from Shriantek. Again, that serve was big, but it was just a little bit closer to the middle line. So Collins had to reach for it, gave Shriantek just a little better angle there. back marathon games it's turning into here andrea how's the, how's the tension down there the tension for me is terrible i can <laughs> barely i can barely watch i wonder whether Iga should try a few body serves because right now everything that is getting not completely far away from danielle but in the strike zone she's really teeing off so maybe a body serve on the second would help her out the serve though the wide serve that has paid more dividends and when she's gotten that kind of placement it's at least worked to open up the court and she just asked her coach's box where to serve on this point right now interesting do you like that if it takes pressure off your mind sometimes you just need to do what you're told She might not ask again. Yes. Collins was waiting for that on the backhand. Uh, I would have focused more on the spin on that serve versus where she went. You know, the spin and the placement on it. That kick right into the wheelhouse for Danielle Collins on her backhand side. Forehand down the line in this game has been a, a banker uh, for Svjantek. Keeps getting her out of trouble. Well, the challenge is you've got to mix it up so that your opponent doesn't sit on that on one serve or the other, but that wide serve has been working to create that more open space. What a hold yeah, from the world yeah. number one. The question is asked once again of Daniel Collins, who is surely now having flashbacks of the 2022 final. Five set points have come and gone for the American. Shantek's got to be feeling just a little better. She's still under <laughs> tremendous pressure here, but feeling a little bit better about having held serve. It had been 
three breaks for her. And that is Thank not something you want to go into possible. a third set with seat, if Thank she you. were to lose this one. Watch out for the heaviness of the Daniel Collins wrist here. Four double faults from her. And she attempted to serve for the set last time. Keep accelerating, says Jared Jacobs. not the sort of ball you expect Shiontek to miss. Here we go. Two points away once again from taking us into a decider. So if she needs them, she will have a further three set points. Five have come and gone, four on her own serve. She'll have three back to back now if required. It's been a confident game so far. Is that a good play for Shuntek, trying to look for more opportunities to come in? I think it is. When she can get them, she just hasn't had a lot of them with the depth, the pace from Collins. But Shuntek has got to find some ways to try to open up the court early. Just the third of the match from Shontek.
smoked that one. 40, 30. Whole body went into it. Good hold for Shriantek to open the decider. Game, final set. That one had some weight behind it. Love it in. It's just so tough, though, when that ball has to be that good to win the point. Can Shriantek keep up that kind of big, precise hitting? I don't know if you have the stats, but this is significantly faster than what Iga has played in the second set. Significantly. It's very visible from the sidelines here. What a hold this would be from Collins. Needs to send a message to Svantec that she's hanging with her in this deciding set. Another shot of blistering power from the right arm of Shiontek. 14 30. Turn, making the adjustment from that Deuce. almost that same shot a few points ago. Fast hands, the instruction from Coach Gerald Jacobs to Daniel Collins from 40-15 to Juice. Tech doing an excellent job of resetting that point Collins with the Collins. high lob. But Collins didn't panic. Just took what she was given, got back to work. She's got another game point. Oh. 
Game Collins. The biggest cry of come on yet from Danielle Collins. The message is sent. Game on. going to be toe to toe this deciding set. Doesn't mind ruffling feathers, Collins. Well, and as we see the average forehand backhand speeds, Andrea was exactly right. The speeds for Iga Sviantek are up by a roughly about nine kilometers or so per hour on the forehand. Up a few kilometers per hour on the backhand as well. Good eyes from our intrepid reporter down Lisa there. Down quickly to my right. Spy, reporter, she's got it all. Another change of racket incoming here for Iga Svantec. She tried this trick towards the end of the second set. She knows which one she wants. Sending one to the stringer. Perhaps expecting to be out here a while yet. Love 13. Problem right now for Svantec, though, with the added speed she's trying to get, it's creating just a few more misses. Still on serve to start this third set, but she is in another spot of bother here at Love 30. Fifteen thirty. Third ace of the match, first of the set. It's been an incredible serving performance, and yet still locked in battle. what she wanted to do with that second serve and she did it and I think that's why the body serve against Collins is a little tough I mean she's she's kind of looking for it tight into her she is re ready to do something with it so break points how to take the lead here once again huge moments in this decider Well watched, Iga Svantec. Great footwork, the squeak of the shoes on the surface. An indicator of just those tiny adjustments she makes at the last minute. Still one break point to go.
think it's these kinds of matchups, these kinds of opponents that push a great player to be even better. I mean, you've got to have some motivation, and I think Shiantek has been motivated by Sabalenka, certainly. Rabakina, who's also a big hitter. Danielle Collins as well, who's gotten her in a big way here. But it's a combination of the game, that the style of play, and also the surface that she ends up playing them on that can determine how much she struggles. And Collins just taking full advantage of the surface, of the speed, the pacing. Looking fairly comfortable out there and just still going for it. Still a long ways from the finish line, but she continues to be impressive. I don't know. I couldn't quite hear, but I think she asked for the out calls to be turned up a bit ah. so she can hear them through the crowd. That's what I gathered. No out call there. Well, and we just got the news that she didn't ask for the out calls to be up, but her string, the tension on her strings, she wants them up a number, up a kilo. So presumably she feels like the ball is flying on her, and she has hit a few shots long today. Yeah, high tension, more control. Low tension, more power. Placement rather than power. Guiding it down the line. Feels like this is the first of what could be a few marathon games in this decider. Interesting, Danielle Collins again asking for her team to be up on their feet after the double fault. Trying to pull from every bit of energy that she can here. Right back point, Shvantec. Collins. 
Great serve, yeah, it was a good serve. Keep punching. winners already for set number three. Point for a 3-1 lead. Game Collins. No dips in intensity here for Danielle Collins. 3-1 lead. Collins leads by three Daylight on the scoreboard. How's the intensity down there, Andrea? From Danielle Collins' side, through the roof, from Iga Shiontek's side, she just seems very introverted right now. She's trying to think her way through the match and trying to find solutions. And she just seems very contemplative to me right now. And the box from Danielle Collins is absolutely fire. They are right <laughs> behind me and I can feel them. <laughs> That's where the party's at. Yeah, they're at the far end to where Danielle Collins is, so they're have to be having to inject extra volume and energy to send it down the other end. Just a, a short delay here while a few members of the crowd in the lower bowl take their seats. We're ready. And that ball dropped below the net on Triantec. Not as easy to get under it and then back over for the spin with the grip that she has. She's on the ropes here, the world number one. One three, fifteen thirty. Leaking errors. for Danielle Collins on top of it. At the worst possible moment for Iga Svantec, she must feel like the world is against her right now. Two points for a double break lead in the deciding set for Danielle Collins.
she is mopping up when she's able to come to the net. But as you've pointed out, Chanta, there aren't that many opportunities to get there. There have been very few shorter balls for Sviantec to move forward on. Still under pressure, facing another break point. Love it in. For Iga, she's having to hit these kinds of shots to win points. And I mean, that's just unreasonable for a player to be able to do that over <laughs> and over, even a player of her caliber. That's why we're seeing a few more misses off of her racket. That's the kind of pattern Sviantec needs to try to create, whether it's off the backhand or the forehand. She can't afford to give Collins two, three, four balls in the same place on the court. She's losing those rallies, the majority of them right now. Love a little rushed in this game. Three points to get one of the breaks back. The old nemesis again New balls. needs a moment to compose herself here, Collins, Collins she can't five, quite four, believe two. that game. Keep looking at Iga Sviantek, looking at her walking, her movement, and when she put that little band just under her knee, just wonder if that's causing her any problems. You figure that's the reason she put it on. Didn't look like she had just a little bit of a limp there walking to her bag, but that's certainly a factor. The movement, the quickness of her changing direction. What I will say is it, it's very unusual to see her with any kind of strapping on. I don't think she would do that lightly. It, it's a message to the opponent, isn't it? It says, I'm feeling something out here. Well, usually that kind of banding is maybe to alleviate like a little tendonitis or something. It doesn't suggest an acute injury, but who knows? Yeah, we've seen Rafael Nadal <laughs> play, play and win Grand Slams with that kind of knee strap for, for about 15 years. She's still down a break, though. 2-4, Shiontek serving. seeing Sviantek keep hitting the ball bigger, look to, to go bigger, and this seems like a difficult matchup to do that against. I mean, it's worked to a certain degree, but it's more of a level playing field with that style of play for Sviantek, and it's going to cause a few more misses off of her racket now, try to increase speed so much. Oh. I also think on the serve, we see her try to hit the serve big, but again, she's just not getting enough from it. She's not getting a lot of free points off of it. It's actually playing herself out of the point because the return is getting back on her quicker 
sometimes than she can react. So that's the struggle right now, trying to figure out, you know, how to how to play this match right now. I think we're very fortunate here because we have a match where it's not really about either player doing anything wrong. It's just about strategy. Who has the better strategy? Who can execute? And this match is an encapsulation of that. Collins again doing it to perfection. She's in that zone and she's not leaving it, Danielle Collins. Three more break points. 15. A little slower serve with a little more side spin from Sviantec. And we could just hear Danielle saying to herself, that's all right, that's all right, keep going. So she feels still good about her returning. She's got to keep looking to move the ball that way. Perfect point starting with the serve. She knows the importance of making a first serve at this point, Shantae, doesn't she? It's the placement on that serve. That's the key for her right now. That's why she's still in this game. Let her serve. Let her serve. It looked like she <laughs> was not going to get out of the way of that one. <laughs> Despite this great get, this is the first time you can see some pain in Iga's face. I think her leg is hurting her on her shirt and landing on it. You could just see it slightly on her face for the first time. What a game, what a hold from Iga Svantec.
love official. These are the moments where Collins you can start to come into her mind just a little bit, how close she is, how close she has been to winning this match against a world number one. Just has lost a slight bit of focus. That's got to help. Quick point for Collins. Keep herself some tension in this game. From fit tennis for Amiga Sviontek. Preventing Collins from getting the strike in. She was 4-1 now. It is two points to level at 4-all. the second break back for all deciding set for again on it is on a knife edge out here how does danielle collins put that disappointment behind her leading by a double break in a deciding set against a potentially wounded world number 1 that's the test What does it feel like, Chanda, to be in that position? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen so many ebbs and flows here in this match. Leads lost. I certainly understand what that's like. Trying to work your way into a set. Seen that as well. But I think it's, it's a double-edged sword because for Collins, losing the lead, she's got to try to calm her mind and kind of settle back in to what she was doing. But Sviantek has made some adjustments as well. She's lost that advantage, Collins. Now it's a different moment, and you've got to work from there. Don't think about what was. Just think about what is. to say that's incredibly difficult to do <laughs> under this kind of pressure in, in this moment on this stage. You made it sound so easy. <laughs> There's a reason why sports psychologists are a thing, isn't that? Three points for a lead in the decider. It's all Sviontek right now. What a turnaround. <laughs> Got her on the move there, Sviontek. Love 15. Iga Shontek smells blood.
15 all. Team Collins are barely sitting down between points now. Channeling all of their energies into Danielle. Clever point that from Shriantek, didn't go for too much, got Collins on the move again. And she's got her on the ropes here, Shriantek two points away. The Shriantek surge is back, just in the nick of time. 15-14. Her back has been against the wall for so much of this Thank match. You. Thank you. But here she is, at match point. Shviantek have been doing so well moving the ball and that point on match point she didn't went right back to Collins three or four times it is still match point well done Danielle Collins Yes. Just one kilometer per hour away from her fastest delivery of the match. gone inside out with that forehand much today Chanda advantage but getting in the position to take the forehand gave her options and Shiantek it's tough for her to guess one way or the other and no way to catch up to that one thank you thank you And an interesting side note, Danielle Collins' speed on the forehand has gone down from 75 miles per hour until she was up for one, down to 58 miles per hour since then. That's a big difference, and she has definitely gotten more tentative, Collins has. She's playing quickly here, Collins. She's ready to serve. She's facing a third match point.
Swiatek has survived Daniel Collins.